census report taken in 2010 showed that the population identifying themselves as multiracial grew by 32% over the census in 2000. One local author is raising awareness with a new book called Raising Mixed Race, Multiracial Asian Children in a Post-Racial World. Woo. Please welcome to New Day, Sharon Chang. How are Yay. you? Yay. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. So what prompted the book? Oh, such a good story. So I'm a mixed identifying person, and I have been my whole life, but I never had language to articulate that because mm -hmm. that wasn't a conversation we had in the public until about 2000 when the census changed. And now all of a sudden you could check more than one box. Right, I remember that was a big deal. Right, and so it doesn't mean that mixed people haven't always been here, they have, but now we can have the conversation. Right. So around that time I met my partner who's also mixed identifying and we started having really intimate, great conversations about what that means in a racialized world. And that felt like enough. And then in 2009, we had our son, who obviously is also mixed. Mm -hmm. And I realized, I was looking at this person, for anyone who's a parent, you know, you feel a very high investment in answering questions for them. You right. want them to engage in a world that's going to be better. You want to do better than was done for you. And I was looking at him thinking, oh my goodness, I still only have questions. I don't have answers for you. So I went out and I started looking for resources. Could have been grown-up books, could have been kid books, anything mm -hmm. um, that would help us have this conversation together. And I couldn't find anything, barely anything, which was horrifying, shocking, infuriating after Why all this time. Why do you think time. that is? Because it's, as you say, not a new experience. Right, um, so much invisibility around mixed race for so long because the public wasn't allowed to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so then when we don't see that visible identity in the media, in press, in movies, in TV, then uh, it doesn't exist, right? And so people don't generate resources about it, they don't ask questions about it, they don't look into it, it mm -hmm. doesn't uh, factor into their mind. And what does that feel like if you're the person who's experiencing this? It's totally erasing and it's confusing. I mean, I would say lots of people manifest differently. It can, it can be enraging. Um, it just probably depends on your context, but I think erasure is a huge experience of mixed mm -hmm. people in the United States for hundreds of years. Right? Now this is one of the fastest growing groups in terms of how people are identifying themselves. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for the rest of us? What should we know? Um, there isn't a lot being done yet. I think that's very nuanced and deep in engaging our youth who are coming up. It, it is the fastest growing identifier amongst youth today who are the six and under, five and under age that is majority children of color, the majority of those, or the, I shouldn't say majority, the fastest growing identifier amongst those is multiracial. Mm -hmm. If we want those children to plug into society, to care about transformation and justice, and we see this in the headlines, right? There's a lot going on right now. If we want that upcoming generational cohort to care and to feel liberated enough to do work, we need to engage with them around their identities, right? So we need to find ways to talk about it that, that's more than what we're currently seeing, which is sort of like identity angst and you know tragic stories. Um, we need to go really deep and connect yeah. to the larger race conversation in the nation. And, which you know is such a frustrating conversation in so many mm -hmm. ways because it's often not very deep, often not very honest, right. often not very inclusive, mm -hmm. all of those things. So what have you tried to do in your book? What, what can we get out of that that will help us all? Mm -hmm. That's such a good, great question. I think uh, it is a parenting book. It's also not a parenting book. Mm -hmm. It's a book about race. And it's a book like about I could racism. learn something about it even if I'm not parenting a well, child at this point. Exactly. So a lot of people have reviewed it at this point. A lot of people have read it. Some of them are parents, some are not. Some are people of color, some are not. Um, and everyone is saying, I feel like I'm taking so much away. I'm learning about the history of race. I'm learning about how this country was founded. I'm learning about systemic racism, institutional racism, really plugging in, again, that word I love, um, to how everything is woven together in our society and manifests in these crises that we see on a daily basis now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm looking at this from the outside because I've just checked the Caucasian box, totally uninteresting in my case, <laughs> What can I do to facilitate this being an open, good conversation? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I talk a lot in the book about that, especially in the last chapter. What can we do to engage um, with children? But the first step in that is engaging ourselves. And I think that applies to everybody. And we're all in different places. This includes white folks too, right? Mm -hmm. um, so really looking inward and asking ourselves questions about how much we know 
um, and how we can go further with that knowledge and start asking questions. Because until we raise our own consciousness and our own awareness, we can't really affect change. Um, so I think that's a starting point for mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. figuring out where you are. And, and uh, what do you think the best way is to open those conversations? With, with children? So, with children and, and actually with each other. Because sometimes there are things, I'm so nosy from having been a reporter that I'll just burst out with my question, mm -hmm. but that's not always the way to go. <laughs> suggest I mean do, um, everybody's different but I'm wondering how we can feel more comfortable about having these conversations mm -hmm. I've done um, you know with with each other with kids. with kids and then talk yeah about adults. well again do you first right and yeah. so I've done a lot of workshops in the last couple of years with a lot of school groups parent groups and the first thing I do is I say to them we're not gonna do talking with your kids first okay. we need to figure out where you are because until you've developed your consciousness, you cannot be an effective um, companion for your children or be an effective conversation with other people. So I really throw out some basic questions. I say, tell me what race is, and I'll have them break out into groups. And sometimes I hear really great, savvy stuff, and then I hear a lot of confusing stuff. And mm -hmm. that definitely leads us to think, if we don't even, if we can't define that, if we don't know the history of how that came to be, how can we move forward? You know, and then a subsequent question, where does the ism come into that? What is racism, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure we can answer all those questions and that we have a solid historical base that's founded in social justice. You've got to come back and talk about <laughs> this some more. I think we could like do a little workshop or something. Right. I think these are great questions. You know, these are great questions and right. so important. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Yeah. Uh, the book is great. It'll be on the website, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yay! That was amazing. Enter a new republic.